as aspiring artists, I think often the number one question we're wrestling with is how do I get better at drawing? How do you get better at mastering the craft of this art thing? How do you figure out which exercises to do and which ones are going to get you there quicker? Now, I've got an array of images here and things and cards and comics and games that I've created over the course of my career. Importantly, they were all done at different stages and they were all done when I had a different level of understanding of the basic foundational concepts of art. Essentially, my technical ability was different as I approached and attacked each of these projects. What I want to talk about in this video is how best to think through some of these concepts like, do you need to learn perspective? If so, what exercises should you do to help you understand it best? Do you need to learn rendering? If so, how? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Let's get started. All right, my name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional artist for 20 years. And again, I've done a large array of things, some comics, some card games, a lot of sort of concept art and uh, entertainment design more recently. And I've been a professional drawing teacher for 10 years as well. And I'm here to help you master the craft of line and color illustration. If these more abstract concepts and advice for how best to improve your illustration and drawing uh, of interest to you, I'd recommend you check out my mini illustration workshop. The link for that will be in the description down below. In that, I give you a little bit more of an in-depth journey and uh, advice for you know things that I've gone through throughout my career, the way that I found it best to think about how to improve. And specifically in that workshop, I cover how to get more detail and polish in your work, how to improve your composition, and how to think about approaching, approaching the idea of becoming a professional artist and getting to a professional level with your work. So go check that out if these more abstract sort of advice-based things are interesting. It's mostly just, again, a few hours of me talking you through my career and giving you a bit of advice. So hopefully you don't make a lot of the mistakes that I made, which uh, just slowed up my development a little bit. What I want to talk about in this video is how do we get better and how do we think about this concept? Now, there's lots of different ideas for how you can get better. There's lots of different suggestions that people will give you. And I think in many ways, what people are really doing is just sort of telling you how they got better. And that's to a certain degree what I'm doing. But I've actually also had a lot of experience teaching in a big university environment. So a big part of what I do when I'm teaching professionally, uh, and again, a thing that I've sort of been doing for the last 10 years is, is teaching people in real classroom environments. And in that situation, we kind of have to use the academic model. We have to do a lot of, uh, you know, boot camp style perspective and rendering. And in that, again, I'm a big proponent of the foundations. And I found that, again, perspective and rendering have helped me out a lot. And I've seen it help out students. But again, I'm in a tricky position because I believe that stuff does work. But also, I think there's many different styles of art. And you may be interested in a particular style of art. And you may be interested in a style of art that doesn't necessarily need a really, really solid, heavy, hardcore foundation. So much of foundational stuff comes down to what you actually want to do with your art. And that's why I feel that if you are learning these basic perspective concepts, the most important thing to understand is that we need to apply them to the actual work you're doing so you can see how they actually help what you want to do. But many of my friends who are some of the most successful artists I know don't really value a lot of those foundational perspective and, and rendering sort of exercises or, or even just thinking about art that way. They learn just by hanging out at home 
and uh, you know maybe they did an art sort of course, but you that 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 art course really didn't teach them a huge amount um, of what they use today in their entertainment career. Um, in most cases, again, they just kind of learnt by doing it. They learnt by practice. Now, I've noticed that there's a lot of pushback in general when I sort of surf the internet, as it were, and look at different advice that people give. I feel like people do push back on this idea of just saying, hey, you just need to practice. You just need to sort of do more of it. And I really think that, again, there is a very simple way that we can think about how best to learn and educate ourselves. And it it lies a little bit in the middle for me, especially when you are learning on your own and you don't have a big classroom environment that's going to allow you to use a lot of peer pressure to get through those, um, you know, really technical assignments and things like that. So I think it's really important to apply those fundamentals. Now, the reason that uh, I sort of have these different things to, to, to show is just to sort of give you an example and, and talk through maybe one concept, which for instance would be perspective. Now, perspective is one of those things that often comes up for artists as something that we're told to learn. Now, how do we go about doing that? Well, again, I think there are actually a lot of different strategies you can use to learn perspective. Certainly when I'm teaching in a, a, an academic environment, the way that we do it is, um, you know, pretty old school. It's very sort of technical. We go through a lot of the geometry and, and we just sort of cover all of that stuff in, in a single class and people have to basically all do the same sort of exercise. The disadvantage of this is that you don't often always get to do as a student the kind of subject matter that you actually enjoy. We're often forced to kind of grind through a lot of these basic concepts and um, it's very difficult to make as part of the curriculum a way for you to actually apply that knowledge. So it's kind of left up to the student to apply it on their own. And again, what I find is if people don't apply it on their own, then often they run into trouble. What I want to show you, share with you here is just that all of these books and things that I would sort of create essentially use a different subset of perspective. So if we think about the knowledge of perspective as like sort of one key concept, think about the knowledge and the information as being separate to both an assignment or an exercise that you might be given, which is meant to help you understand that. And also then the way that you would actually apply it in your work day to day. So there's three separate concepts there that I think are important to separate out a little bit. And if we kind of get them mixed up, I think often that's where a lot of the the danger can happen. That's where a lot of the, you know, the, the trickiness can happen where we get wires crossed and maybe someone will say something that doesn't, it doesn't quite make sense. I think a big part of that and a big reason for that is that drawing means many different things to many people. And while I think there is a foundational element to art that we all share as artists, and again, I'll use perspective to explain that a little bit, Really, there is no monolithic set of exercises or way that you would learn that that's going to apply to everyone. I think that is a bit of a misconception that often gets thrown out there. You know, the typical way that I feel like there is misguiding advice is that, uh, you know, people will say everyone kind of should just study and learn to draw properly, learn to draw realistically or Everyone should learn to, you know, like copy photos and, um, you know, do basically copying other people's art. And uh, again, you know, that that might work for you. you. It might be really important for you to, to learn how to draw realistically and, and, and copy from photos. But again, you know, if you're one of these people, you know, and I'm one of these people that are just not that interested in that, um, it, it hasn't really come up for me in 20 years of, uh, of, of being paid, you know, full time to do art that anyone's ever wanted me to do that. Um, when they do, I just say no, and then I just take uh, other work on. So, you know, practically, I, I don't think um, that sort of thing is an issue, right? You you end up doing the kind of art that you do, and um, you know, you kind of find people to work with who want you to do that, but that particular type of art. Again, it's more complicated than that, and there's a lot of business that goes into um, developing yourself and, and becoming valuable to to people who are going to pay you money for art. But but at, at its core, again, not everyone does everything in art. And 
the way that we access that foundational knowledge, the perspective, is um, is different for each of us. And it's also different depending on which project we use. So, for instance, the, the first book that I um, sort of illustrated was the, the Seven Pirates book. And in this book, I, I sort of actually had storyboards that, that I was sort of given to, to, to work from. But you can see that there is like a little bit of perspective. Um, but as I was journeying through this kind of, um, again, what, what I sort of called the, the illustrator's journey, trying, trying to figure out how to do this, um, you can see that I did have a, a fairly sort of rudimentary understanding of perspective here. And I could sort of fumble my way through some of the scenes. I knew the very, very basics at this stage. And again, I, I reckon this was probably about five years into me. I, I'd done a bunch of things and then I sort of got this project. So I wasn't an amateur by any means. But what I can tell you is that from a perspective standpoint, every time I had to do one of these scenes where I would draw a background it would really suck. I, I really didn't feel like I had that sort of stuff under control. So again, the, the reason I sort of mention this is just to underline the point that there is sort of a large body of knowledge that we can sort of call perspective. And that's one of the things that we help to, um, we, we use to help us draw. And as artists, again, you kind of build your understanding and knowledge of that. And as I sort of progressed through my career, again, I got better at executing on that basic idea and um, creating artwork that sort of, you know, has perspective in it. So the difference is sort of how easy it was for me to, to do these and, um, you know, again, how fun it was to do these. But again, I was still able, even though I didn't feel like I had a really good understanding of it, to kind of bumble through and figure things out. Um, and certainly having to draw a lot of pirate ships and other things like that really helped me to to understand those um, things that I was learning about perspective in books. And my basic sort of advice is that I think you should follow a, an applied fundamentals approach, which is where, again, we spend most of our time actually practicing doing the types of things that we want to do. And um, you sort of build your foundational um, knowledge and ability to support those. So we start with the goal and the outcome, and then we build, um, I guess, a, a curriculum for, our, for ourselves that, that sort of teaches us to do the things that we're trying to do. So if you sort of fast forward um, a few years, again, um, the, the outcome and what I was able to achieve with a very, very low level of perspective would, was still, again, a professional result. Um, but again, once we get to, you know, a little bit later, we were working at Pinocchio. Again, my understanding of how to draw the backgrounds increased a lot. My understanding of how to, um, again, just kind of create scenes and, and create that sort of plausible three-dimensional space increased a lot. Um, I, I got I got a lot better at it, a lot more comfortable doing it. And again, it felt um, when I was working on this book that again, the backgrounds were, were more fun. It was a more enjoyable process. And uh, again, you know, there's lots of situations here where, you know, we're, we're just drawing, you know, houses and, um, you know, many sort of different, different you know, sort of city cityscapes. Again, doing this when I was working on the, the the Seven Pirates book would have been a complete unmitigated nightmare. I mean, I just would have no ability to draw this type of scene back then. But again, I was still able to access enough of that information to kind of uh, do what I needed to do. Now, the the key there is just that again, you you need to figure out how to draw from that body of knowledge and how to actually figure out how to use it in your actual work. And, and that's where often a lot of those sort of exercises come in where we get um, sort of advice for do this perspective exercise or do that perspective exercise. Um, and the other thing I want to talk about is, is, is again, that often when we're, you know, creating other types of illustrations, so you've got some, you know, um, World of Warcraft trading card games that I, I guess would sort of be Hearthstone now or um, whatever it is. And again, um, these really don't have any perspective in them in that sort of traditional sense, right, where, where we're trying to draw buildings and, and things like that. There's form drawing and there's construction, but... Again, if, if you just wanted to do this, 
then you probably could get away with accessing a very small amount of that kind of perspective knowledge that, you know, again, if you wanted to draw a comic book with a lot of backgrounds, you, you would need to really, really dig deep and understand the, the fundamentals and the foundations of perspective very well. If you're just doing sort of floating characters on backgrounds, you don't need to do it that much. And it would be the same thing here with the Mythic Arcana board game where um, or it's sort of like a card game, trading card game, where essentially we're just sort of drawing a range of characters and it's more a matter of coming up with an interesting little sort of illustration and trying to represent these sort of uh, deities um, accurately, make them sort of look cool. Now, there's, there, there is an underlying understanding of where we are in relation to the subject here. Um, that's obviously important from a perspective standpoint. But again, depending on what you're doing, you're going to need to access and learn a specific amount of you know, perspective or rendering or any sort of foundational concept. And the trick is to understand that no artist really starts out by fully developing a complete foundational knowledge of everything. It, it's, an, it's an evolving concept. And um, depending on what you're going to do, you're going to need to access and understand, you know, different bits of it. That's just sort of natural. Now, again, I think the danger there is um, often I, I, I sort of hear people suggest from, you know, from drawing advice, um, teachers and things like that. They kind of say, they kind of talk about drawing and, and learning perspective as if there's, if it, as if it's this kind of monolithic entity that you kind of have to learn completely initially to, you know, before you sort of do anything else. And, and, and I think logically, it's very easy to get drawn into that narrative and have people really um, have artists such as yourself really kind of focus on it and hyper focus on it. And uh, again, in my experience, that's not the most effective way to go. And again, it's very possible to create work that is interesting and, and has appeal to people while, um, you know, not really, you know, not really understanding or, or being able to apply all of the foundation. And uh, again, you can still get professional work. But the, the thing that will change and the thing that will make it better for you is that, as I said, every time I did a background in, in Seven Pirates, it, it was like pulling teeth, right? It was really tough. Um, whereas, uh, you know, once I sort of learnt perspective and once I learnt these things, it became a lot easier and a lot more fun to draw these backgrounds. I, I didn't really fear when I was, uh, you know, making a little thumbnail that I sort of drew a whole little city or something in there. Um, again, I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, that's that's fine. That that'll be that'll take some time. But again, there's there's nothing uh, inherently kind of like scary. So a lot of the difference is just that, again, you can kind of muddle your way through these things and you can certainly develop a career that doesn't really require you to access either a realistic drawing um, sort of style. You know, you don't necessarily need to go to life drawing every day, all day, if that's not really the art you want to do. But certainly if you do need to draw realistically, then, you know, really digging deep into... Um, you know, how to draw, uh, you know, from, from life and get, um, you know, realistic portrait um, likenesses and those sorts of things is going to be very important. But, get, but again, at its core, what you have to do is support the work you're trying to do and understand what foundational skills you need to build that. Because again, our understanding of foundation is something that evolves. It evolves over time. So let's do a quick little example of that using, um, again, some sort of head sketching to give you an example of what I mean by the fundamentals need to be applied. All right. So if we start to think about how to learn a particular concept of art, often, again, you might be told and you might start to learn a head construction system because, again, what we're trying to do is understand a basic subset of anatomy and we're trying to systemize that and figure out how that fits in and connects with the form drawing and the, the sequence and the structure. Now the trick is that going from here to the next stage is sort of different for everyone. It's not always clear how we go from this 
to actually you being able to make your heads in your actual work better, right, and more solid. I think that it can be dangerous to just repeat this. Now, I think that it's a common thing that we often get told to do, which is to sort of keep doing the exercise. Um, and again, I think that is often a legacy of being in a traditional schooling system where we sort of get given assignments. It's not always the best way to learn something like drawing, however. And the reason for that is I've seen a lot of people do this. I've seen a lot of people just focus on the structure, focus on the exercises. Um, you know, you might have seen that exercise. We sort of try and draw this same sort of skull head blocky um, sort of Loomis head construction from like, you know, a, a hundred different angles and sort of practice it that way. This is that, again, I've seen people get really good at doing these exercises and good at repeating the same blocky head, but their work never really improves at the same rate. And it's almost like they just get a lot better at doing the exercise. They don't actually get better at applying it. And so their art just doesn't actually get that much better. They're just getting good at the study. The most important thing for you is to understand how to actually get this into your workflow, how to actually get this into your art. That's why, again, I think that you should try and apply foundational concepts as soon as possible. And that's why my general advice is that you should probably spend about 20 to 30% of your time taking in new drawing information, maybe doing a few exercises and a few studies, but most of your time actually applying it to the work you want to do. What you find is that, again, what I had the way that I use this information is going to be very different to the way that someone who wants to draw much more realistically or what someone who wants to get a realistic likeness of a, an actor or something like that for their work. Um, you know, I'm going to utilize this information differently to, to them. We all share the same stuff. We all share the same basic understanding and appreciation of the beauty and the simplicity of these systems and the importance of perspective and rendering and understanding the planes of the face. But the way we apply it is very different as artists. And again, that's the important thing to understand is that there's no one exercise that will kind of help everyone. We can get a basic idea by sort of copying um, these kind of ideas and maybe doing a little bit of it. But the reason that it's important to apply it is that the way I would sort of use it is that, you know, I might be, you know, trying to place it on a figure. So if we look at how that works, it's, it's, it's not just the structure, again, in this sort of perspective that's important. And again, it's not a matter of just practicing it from all perspectives. It's a matter of fitting it into the workflow. It's a matter of fitting it into the way that I actually work. So again, the way that I would work is through doing a sort of figure construction sketch first, because again, the main reason I need to draw heads is that I need to place it on a figure at a particular scale. So let's look at again how that might work. Very, very rough sketch there. Now, the key is that all of this stuff is important. I'm thinking about all of this, but the main reason that I use this day to day is when I'm doing figure construction and it's important for me to understand how this applies. Now, this is important for probably an infinite number of reasons, but I mean, one of the major traps that people can often fall into is that they get really good at doing head constructions from this angle, and then they realize that most of the way they actually apply it is a lot smaller with a lot less resolution, and that one of the major things we're often trying to do is actually make sure that the head connecting to the body makes sense. So placing the head relative to the figure is actually one of the main benefits of a, you know, a head construction system like the Loomis method that we would use sort of day to day when we are you know, drawing comics or, or, or something similar to that. Let me put this head in. adding like a little bit 
more detail. Now, again, this is still just a sketch, right? This would be a first pass and we'd probably um, erase over that and, you know, um, refine that a little bit more. I'm doing it with a big sort of pencil so it's easy to see. But the basic point here is that what you need to do is figure out how these foundational concepts, right? And that could be rendering, it could be perspective, it could be, again, learning anatomy and understanding how do you kind of get you looking at an anatomy book. How do you get you studying, um, you know, head construction by Andrew Loomis or figure construction by Andrew Loomis? How do you get that into your work? What you'll find is that it's very specific to what you want to do. And that's why you can try and find exercises that might be useful to kind of help us understand the technique, right? So if we understand the, ba the, the basic concept there, the first is sort of technique. right idea and the second thing would be an exercise right and the third is application and the trick is that I feel like what most traditional academic institutions focus on is the exercise so it, it, it's it's doing studies and this sort of thing in the abstract because they can't tell how you necessarily want to apply it, and that's actually very tricky to assess, what we tend to do is focus as sort of a culture on the exercise. Now, again, when you're learning by yourself, and I think specifically with art, it's really important to understand that the technique and the idea are universal. They are a monolith that we call foundation. And this is where we talk about as artists, understanding perspective, rendering, form drawing, um, visual library, etc., etc., etc. And again, not all those concepts might be 100% clear to you. Again, I will, I'll make some videos in the future that sort of talk about those concepts. But again, what we consider as foundation is related to every artist, but how we apply it day to day is not. And that's why I recommend that, again, you spend about sort of 80 right, to 70% of your time um, as essentially applying and, and actually doing what you want to do and sort of maybe spend a little bit less time on the exercise um, side of it, right? So less time doing this in the abstract, more time, again, studying the techniques and ideas. As soon as you kind of have the technique and the idea, then get as close to, you know, you practicing how you're actually going to implement it, um, you know, all the time, day in, day out, because that'll give you very, very specific, specific information about what to extract, what to extract from those exercises. So again, this is hopefully um, you know, a, a very sort of simple uh, concept, but I really, really do think it's an important thing to pay attention to if you're trying to figure out, you know, what do I need to learn? Um, how do I go about learning it? I think it's the how that's more important. I think we all kind of know the things that we're meant to learn as artists. The trick is, um, you know, how do we actually get it into our work at the same time? And what I'd suggest to you is, again, that there's no monolithic um, set of exercises or things that all artists sort of need to do. It's very much a matter of you thinking more about the outcome, how you're actually going to use it, what problem are you trying to solve, and how does this technique, how do these ideas, how do these concepts of perspective and rendering um, at their most abstract level, how do they apply to what you're doing? If you are working on your own and if you are sort of developing yourself, you kind of don't need to formalize these things into exercises. Remember, that's something that's kind of done more for an academic um, situation. You, you can kind of just try and sort of apply, right? You can just kind of try and say, well, that's a cool concept. How do I actually use it? And again, that's what I find I sort of just do naturally, right? That's how I'd sort of naturally learn. Um, is I would sort of try and draw these comic books and then I would sort of read books on perspective. I'd take courses on perspective and I then I'd be sort of, you know, applying it for the majority of my time. Um, again, sort of, so that would be 20 to 30%, right? Study. Now, again, it's important to understand that as artists, 100% of our time, right? 100% of our time is always self-development. Because the act of doing it as artists, the act of practicing, 
is going to help us get better anyway. So all of this helps us get better. The trick is how much of it should be, again, you're focusing on you know techniques and exercises and how much of it should just you be doing what you actually want to do. Again, I think this is the more important point. Anyway, that is all I've got. If you want to hear a little bit more about these sort of ideas, again, this stuff is a little bit more abstract, but for the those of you who are really, really thinking about these things and, and struggling with like what to do, this might be really useful. If you want to learn a little bit more, check out my illustration mini workshop, which covers a lot of these concepts in more detail and goes over how to get more polish and detail in your work, how to improve your composition, and how to think about the idea of professional work and approaching it both from uh, you know uh, the mental side and also a practical side. So check that out. Anyway, that's all I've got now. Happy drawing. Catch you around.